Hi everybody, I'm Emily Pilliton from Girls Garage and welcome to our final episode of Tool School Wooden Box Edition. Are you ready for the big reveal? Ta-da! Here's my wooden box. I'm very, very proud of it. So I did some work to finish my box. I obviously have done some painting. I just used a regular house paint, an interior or an exterior paint will work. I used our Girls Garage Red, and then I used a paint pen to do some decorating. In terms of hardware, you had a couple different choices. I'm Probably most of you will want to put some hinges on your box, and so I used two small hinges on the back here. My recommendation for installing hinges is that the screws are very tiny, so I like to use a screwdriver instead of a drill, just so I don't strip my screws or, or not even a driver. Let's use a hand screwdriver. You'll have more control over when to stop those tiny little screws. And then on the front of my box, I chose to lock this, because like I said, this is a donation box for Girls Garage, and I added a small hasp, which is H-A-S-P. A hasp is a mechanism for locking a door. Sometimes you see them with the, the metal post that slides like this. Um, so lots of different options for how you may want to lock your box, or maybe you don't want to lock your box at all. But, ta-da, it's done. Whew, that was a lot of work and we learned so much. Speaking of learning a lot, it's time for your pop quiz. I have six questions to test your knowledge from the past couple of episodes. Let's dive right in. Question number one. True or false, a two by four measures two inches tall by four inches wide. The answer is false. A two by four is not two by four. It is one and a half inches tall by three and a half inches wide. Remember how we learned about nominal dimensions versus actual dimensions? Nominal dimensions are what we call lumber and actual dimensions are what they are in real life. That's because of how lumber is milled, that it dries and it's playing down to a standard size. Did you get that one right? Hope so. Number two. What is kerf? Kerf is A, the brand of a chop saw, two, B, <laughs> the width of a saw blade, C, a slang term for sawdust, or D, a curse word that we use at Girls Garage when we are frustrated. The answer is B, kerf, K-E-R-F, is the width or thickness of a saw blade. Remember how important this was when we used the chop saw and we needed to account for our kerf and make sure the whole thickness of our blade was on the X side of our line. Kerf. Number three. Which of the following saws are ideal for making curved cuts? Is it A, chop saw, B, coping saw, C, table saw, or D, jigsaw? It's a trick question. There are two answers, B and D. A coping saw and a jigsaw, we use both, are great for making curved cuts because they have such small blades. How are we doing, 100% so far? Let's go on to number four. Number four, what unit other than inches are nails measured in? Tap into your history brain on this one. Bonus points if you can remember the historical legend behind this unit. My drum roll is getting weaker. The answer is pennies. Do you remember this? An eight penny nail, a 16 penny nail, and even sneakier, pennies are measured or represented with the letter D. So a 16D nail or an 8D nail. Why? Here's your bonus answer. D comes from the Roman coin called a denarius. Do you remember this? Which was like a Roman penny. Ah, so sneaky. History. Number five. In screw sizing, for example, the screws we use, number eight by one and five eighths, what does this first number represent? What does number eight mean in that sizing? Thinking, computing. The answer is that number refers to the width or the thickness of the shank of your screw. That's the post, the central post. 
It's also sometimes referred to as gauge, the gauge of your screw. That's important because when we're going to pick pilot hole bits, a bit to drill our pilot hole, we need to know what that shank size is so we can pick a bit that's just slightly smaller than the diameter of our screw. Last one. Number six. What is the difference between a drill and a driver? Are they the same thing? Are they cousins? Do you remember? We used one to do one thing and one to do something else. We use them together. A drill is for drilling holes and an impact driver or a driver is for installing screws. We can remember that because driver sounds like screwdriver. We also talked about how if you only have a drill at home, you can use a drill to put in screws, but I highly recommend that you own both these tools because they work best together. How'd you do? Did you get 100%? Of course you did! So, we've come to the end of our first season of Tool School. We built this beautiful wooden box and we would love to know from you what else you want to build. We've gotten some votes for a giant jigsaw puzzle, for lamps, for toolboxes, all kinds of stuff. So let us know. You can DM us. You can hashtag us at GG Tool School and we can't wait to build our next project with you. Thanks so much for being with us. See you next time.